Hey, what's up guys? Tolly Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the AOC Aegon AG271UG. Now don't let the name fool you because it's very similar to other uh, monitors in the AOC line, but this is a 27 inch 4K IPS monitor that sits at a whopping £622 on Amazon.co.uk. Now on Amazon USA it's also quite expensive, it's $800. Now to give you a bit of context, in comparison I previously reviewed the ViewSonic uh, XG27000 uh, um, 4K that is also a very similar uh, monitor except that one comes with AMD's FreeSync whereas this AOC comes with uh, Nvidia's G-Sync. I'd previously reviewed that monitor at £480. Since it, its price has risen to £550 um, and also you've got the Acer Predator XB281HK which is a very similar monitor except for the fact that it has a TN display whereas this AOC has an IPS display. So in terms of pricing, don't be surprised. The reason I show you the other models is because, in fact, the £620 is actually relatively cheap considering. Even though AOC gave me a quoted uh, price of just under £700 as an MSRP. Anyway, without further ado, what about its specs? What does it get? So, it's a 27-inch monitor, has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, has a quoted response time of 4 milliseconds. It runs at a resolution of 3840 times 2160, which is 4K at 60 hertz over DisplayPort. Um, it has uh, a DisplayPort uh, input and HDMI. Um, I would definitely ensure that you're running on DisplayPort in order to just get the best out of the monitor. Uh, you've got um, also a 2 watt speaker, which is very basic, um, and you've got a 100x100 V-cell wall mount if you want to use it. So those are all the specs. Uh, other than that, just make sure they're um, just check in the description below for the Amazon links uh, for my previous review of the ViewSonic and also uh, the specs of the uh, AOC. Now before getting into the uh, panel quality I want to talk about a little bit about the build quality. Now the build quality of monitor is fantastic. The whole AOC Aegon line has been fantastically designed and I'm very much impressed with uh, this model as well. It's got a very thin bezel which um, doesn't distract you from the screen. It's also got a, um, a brushed um, black look at the top um, with the Aegon logo over here. The stand allows you to basically do everything you'd wish, up and down, a full 180 if you so wish, and a tilt controls, and a clever p uh, pivot system uh, through its actual stand. So very nice from uh, AOC. On the right hand side of the monitor, uh, which you might not be able to see, well you won't be able to see, you've got a little uh, stand over here for your um, for your headphones, which is very useful for those who those of us who game, or obviously it's a gaming monitor. Uh, you've got headphone input, uh, headphone output, sorry, and a microphone input. You've got uh, four USB 3.0 uh, ports, uh, one of which is fast charging uh, enabled, two of which can be found on the right hand side, and two which are underneath. Other than that, uh, the OSD uh, controls are very easy to use. I have no sort of complaints, but I do find them a little bit basic. Now, the reason why I say basic is because, well, I, I would have liked a, little, a few more options in here. For example, like gamma control and whatnot uh, to be included. Uh, well, at least a little more detailed version of it. Now, I'm on sRGB mode. Uh, however, I actually prefer to use it on user mode. On user mode, I put everything on 65. And the reason why I don't use sRGB mode is in order to um, control the brightness. I've got it currently at 100, but in all honesty, that's very bright. I would use it normally at 90 or 85. Uh, you've got the gamma controls over here, but I just would have liked an extended um, uh, list of gamma uh, rather than just gamma 1, 2, and 3. I would have liked uh, just a more comprehensive uh, guide with Kelvin controls as well, given the fact that this is a pretty expensive monitor. You've got the overdrive setting, which I'll get into this uh, soon, and then you've got predefined game modes, which go FPS, RTS, and whatnot. Um, within the uh, OST setup, you can obviously change the OST, and extra, you've got USB charge and deep sleep. That's deep sleep of the um, the, the monitor and USB charge once your PC is off you can still charge your phone via the um, USB port on the right hand side. So the OSD is good uh, but I would have just liked just that little bit better for the um, monitor's price. Now let's go into the panel quality. Now the panel is an IPS display so naturally you'd expect fantastic viewing angles and yes indeed you get fantastic viewing angles no problems left right or center it's fantastic. 
Um, in terms of the actual colors itself, now very similar to the ViewSonic monitor, which I actually looked back at my old review, I the same sort of thoughts. And in all honesty, I wouldn't be surprised if the panels are being shared uh, across manufacturers. The reason I say that is because its IPS panel is very good, the color accuracy is very nice. Uh, when I ch uh, put it through a calibrator, I found it to have a delta E of about 1. Point, uh, about 1, 1. Uh, 10, uh, so it's very, very good. Um, however, I still do feel that, uh, just like the ViewSonic, that the uh, colors are slightly washed out. Versus other IPS, PLS, and um, VA panels out there, I just felt that the uh, colors just could have been just that little bit uh, more, um, or less washed out and a little bit more accurate. Nevertheless, the, uh, the colors do look nice uh, in comparison to a TN panel, and I definitely would recommend it. In just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to try and say over here, is that in terms of an IPS panel, I would have expected just that little bit more, especially at the price range we're at over here. I would expect extremely popping colors, very accurate white points, and just a general amazing uh, experience, uh, so to speak. But it is okay, and it's above average. It's not bad, and neither is it, um, is it just a borderline okay? I would say it's good. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've got any questions, make sure you pop them down in the, uh, in the comments below and I, um, I'll, I'll be sure to see them and reply. So pound quality is decent, but what about its gaming performance? Well, its gaming performance is what is really the most important thing over here because it is a gaming monitor. It's uh, aimed for gamers. Now I've got Counter-Strike running over here. The only reason I've got Counter-Strike is because my GTX 960 isn't exactly the most capable of graphics cards for 4K. However, Counter-Strike is a competitive game and the reason I use Counter-Strike is because I can test its uh, input lag um, and also to see how its response time would fare. That's just in terms of user experience without using any sort of professional equipment. Now all I can say is just that it's exactly like the ViewSonic. I notice a bit of choppiness that's happening. Again, just like the ViewSonic review that I had previously done, I wasn't sure if that's to do with GPU, is that to do with the game, is that to do with the monitor. I'm going to give it to the benefit of the doubt and say that's just my my system rather than the actual um, rather than the actual monitor because I've noticed this on a majority of 4K monitors that I've reviewed. So it's. It's just a passing observation and the reason why I should mention it is also because that in case you can see it on the video itself. However, what about its responsiveness and actual its uh, input lag? Now the responsiveness of the monitor is, I would say, relatively slow. It's not exactly like a TN panel of sorts, and neither does it really compete with some of the best IPS or PLS um, uh, gaming panels that I've seen out there. Of course, those panels are not 4K, they're either 2K or 1080p monitors, but nevertheless, it's something that I can benchmark against. So in all honesty, I do find um, its response time to be okay, but it's not the best. Now, I do find the overdrive setting is useful in order to aid this. However, when I do enable overdrive, I do notice a lot of overshoot ghosting. So I put it on strong and that very much uh, aids uh, in terms of the response time monitor. However, I do notice a lot of overshoot ghosting and you might be able to see all the brickwork uh, changing um, sort of color and having this black sort of shadow on it on every single sort of pixel around there. So it's something I did notice. If you're going to be gaming competitively, I don't know why you'd buy this monitor anyway, just like my conclusion of the view Sonic. If it's a competitive game like Counter-Strike, you wouldn't buy a 60Hz panel anyway, neither would you splash out £620 on a 4K panel. So in terms of casual gaming, it's perfectly acceptable. I would personally use um, its overdrive setting on um, medium uh, because you get much less uh, overshoot. You still do get it, but it's less um, apparent there. Uh, so I'll use it on a medium uh, side, uh, the medium um, overdrive setting. Unfortunately, there's no other way of boosting um, down the input lag and the input lag is very minimal, I must say. However, it is still noticeable versus other panels out there. It is still very much a monitor I would still consider for competitive gaming in terms of input lag wise. However, it's something that I'm still just trying to say that if you're going to buy this for competitive gaming, you might want to look elsewhere. But that said, if you were looking for competitive gaming, why would you buy a 4K 60Hz panel when you could get a 2K 144Hz or 200Hz panel, for example? So anyway, that's all I was just trying to say is that, yes, I would like this monitor in terms of gaming. It is very much aimed for more casual gamers rather than uh, more serious competitive gamers um, who are going to take it a lot more seriously. So overall, it is one of the 
just like the ViewSonic, is one of the best um, gaming monitors at 4K that I've come across. I would definitely recommend it. It is very expensive, but you've got Nvidia's G-Sync, which is there. I didn't really show it off uh, as much, but it is included, and that's why you get that extra bump up in the price versus the ViewSonic, for example. So if you're an Nvidia user and you want to invest into G-Sync, get this over the View, uh, ViewSonic just because it offers Nvidia G-Sync. If not, go for the Adaptive Sync or FreeSync and get the ViewSonic instead. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what you think about this video. Take care, guys. Totally dubbed out. Bye-bye.